Kentucky, but hi everybody. Uh, this is the Signals Community Call um, for the end of August. We've had some great registrants. I know a number of people watch us uh, uh, recorded after the fact. So if you're checking that out, thank you so much. If you're on live, uh, do say hi in the chat and we'll absolutely uh, get to those questions. We've got two great guests today. We've got Adnan from Trace Test and we've got Paolo who works uh, teaching people how to use Signals, which is just fantastic. And uh, 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 Prane is here as well. Um, let me go ahead and start to admit some of our community members who are here. And if you have questions, community members, of course, feel free to just hop on, unmute yourself and, and, and say hi and, and, and ask stuff. So the last couple of weeks we've been doing um, uh, hotel webinars where we've just been talking about like vendor neutral stuff, topics within hotel, which has been really fun. If you check out our previous feed, if you check out on the YouTube or LinkedIn, you can see those uh, videos. They've been, they've been great, but uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, tr uh, trace test here in just a sec. Pranay, do you want to say hi to the people? Do you have uh, news you want to give people? Oh yeah. I, I think uh, this is great. Uh, I think this is the first time we are having uh, members from our community start presenting in, in in the community call so pretty excited about uh it and yeah thanks adnan and paulo to agree to it uh yeah i think looking forward to it and if somebody's watching on the live streams and you want to just join the zoom and have any questions or even ask as comments in linkedin i think that should be great yeah absolutely and i will be uh i will be keeping an eye on that uh that linkedin uh chat as well so yeah if you just send in the chat question there Okay, Adam, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, and we'll start with you talking about trace test. Definitely, yeah. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Adnan, as obviously everybody already said. Um, yeah, I run DevRel at Trace Test, and yeah, let me also just quickly pull up some slides because I'm a massive nerd and I like showing slides. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, that's that's DevRel life. I know that there's like. You know, sometimes you'll go to a conference and they'll be like, no slides. You're like, oh, can I just have a couple slides? Come on, be cool. Oh, no, I, I love my slides. I love my <laughs> slides, I have to say. Um, it's not going to be a lot of slides. It's going to be more talking about cool, cool technology and cool software and just take three slides just to get my point across. Um, and then, obviously, first and foremost, I want to say hi to the uh, Signals community. Um, I've been in your Slack for a while, and I think... Uh, you all are really cool, really, really nice. And it's awesome to see so, so much interaction between the community members and then the maintainers as well. Um, and yeah, um, why we're here today from trace test. So we basically, uh, we built an integration with trace test a while back and we wrote some content around it and wrote some demos and tutorials and examples for you all to, uh, to get up and running really quickly. And that's basically what, uh, what I'm here to, to explain. So we're going to be talking about what trace test is about observability. We're going to talk about a bit about trace based testing, observability driven development, all those cool, uh, cool new, uh, we're going to call them buzzwords, but they're not really buzzwords. They do make a lot of sense when, uh, when you start thinking about it. Um, but all in all, the basic agenda of what I will be talking about is that tracing is awesome, but testing is not really there yet. Um, and here's how we solve it. So, um, the way tracing is awesome is that we finally get uh, observability into all of our distributed apps running across different distributed systems like Kubernetes, microservices, serverless, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where, where Signal steps in and makes that uh, so much easier because you basically, by using distributed tracing, you know exactly what's happening across the entire set of microservices uh, that you're developing. Um, but if you're thinking about that rapid evolution of, of tracing for the last, let's say, some three, four years back, um, it's become amazing what you can do, do with tracing. Testing hasn't really followed that arch. It hasn't really followed that rapid evolution uh, as distributed tracing has. Um, but what if I can, can tell you that you could use the data that you capture in traces as part of your testing strategy? which means that you can prevent errors you see in traces from breaching production at all in the first place. Um, that would be pretty pretty cool uh, because that would give you a, a harness of sorts to, to just stop stop breaking changes, get into production at all. Um, and then now, the, the solution thing is, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but 
the, the funniest thing is, you know, like the, like the infomercial setup where it's like, oh, now I know you're dreaming. Now that can't be possible. <laughs> I was genuinely like, I'd done some reading on Trace Tennis. I was like, and but you say that, and I really do have that reaction where I'm like, no, that's not possible. You can't do that. <laughs> like, you know, I've worked with Traces for five, six years now, and I'm like, how how would you connect that to a test suite? So yeah, I'm excited. Let's let's take a look. It's uh, I'm gonna say it's all auto magical. That's that's I like that word. Uh, so it just kind of works and it's, it's, it is magical and it's automatic. So automatically let's use that one. Um, and that's what the, the whole solution to this problem is, is that you already plug in, you have the plug and play signals for monitoring and, and distributed trace, and that's already there. It's already ready for you to, to use with your, uh, with your system. But then because you already have the traces in your system, you use trace test to leverage those traces for trace-based testing. So you can basically enable both the monitoring and the testing of your API, of your distributed system by using the, the, the distributed tracing you already have, which is basically two birds, one stone type of thing, which I think is phenomenal because you're already putting the energy into uh, adding the code instrumentation or open telemetry into your code base. Why not use it, right? You're basically adding it and doing tons of tons of work to add it just to get, you know, safe production, but why not use it for testing as well? You're already doing it. Right. Um, and that's why, that's why I think that's, uh, basically the modern way of doing testing right now, you trigger a test, you write an assertion against the data, both from the response and from the distributed trace, and then you validate the trace data. Um, and you can basically run test suites or, uh, test specs, but you can all also validate the trace itself if it's uh, if it's following rules and uh, semantic conventions and rules, et cetera, et cetera, that the open telemetry uh, conventions uh, dictate. So it's, it's, this is probably, I'm going to say probably, but I, I think it's the modern way of testing. Um, and let me explain that through not words, but actually some cool demos. Uh, this is a demo that we did set up. So you can also see the link here at the bottom. Uh, we can also share this in a comment. I can I can share it in a comment as well for, for the viewers to check it out. But this is basically an example of using a distributed service or a, a distributed application with multiple services. Um, it's called PokeShop because it's basically uh, handling Pokemon. That you would never have guessed that, I bet. Um, it basically has an API, a node API, has a Redis for some caching, has RabbitMQ as a queue. Um, which is pretty cool that you can actually test RabbitMQ or Kafka. Uh, it also has a worker that's an asynchronous worker, so an async process, which is pretty, it's it's a pain in, pain in the butt to, to test. And then you have some Postgres uh, to store the data. So that, that's just a sample microservice setup. Um, and let me go ahead and show you how that would work. So let me pop over to the terminal real quick, and I'm just going to run a few curl uh, curl commands. So let's say we have this curl command, I clear it out a bit so you can see it better and zoom in a tiny bit more. So the curl command right here is basically, I'm just getting all of the Pokemon I have in my uh, in my database. Right now, obviously I have zero because I haven't added any. So if I go ahead and add one, let's say I add number six and that's Charizard because I think Charizard is, is awesome. Um, and now if I run the get once again, I'll see, yeah, I have one item, it's, Charizard, yeah, it's Charizard, awesome. So this all works fine. But what if I decide to add the ID of 9,009 ,009 million, you, you get the point. So what if I just add a random value? Obviously this is returning fine because it's not throwing an error. But if I go ahead and do the get once again, I'll see that I still have one item in my database, which means something has failed, but I don't really know what it is. And it's failed silently, which is the worst type of failure, right? Um, so what I, my, my process of what do I do next? I have obviously tracing enabled in my system. So I'm going to get my traces in signals and I'm going to see uh, what, what was going to happen. And obviously this is a setup with, with signals, uh, the open source version. Obviously you, you, you have a cloud version as well. So I don't really know how that works. I just drew this one. For uh, simplicity. TBD, TBD, almost everyone is self-hosting right now. So, so this oh, okay. is, this is the main line. So this is good. Oh, okay. Then, then I'm, I'm on point, uh, which is, this is what, uh, sending the traces to signals would look like. So uh, the Node.js API and the Node.js worker obviously are using the Node.js SDK for open telemetry. Um, and what we're doing here is that we're sending all of those traces to the uh, ingestion endpoint in signals, which is obviously the open telemetry collector uh, that's dedicated to signals. And then that gets stored in ClickHouse. 
it gets uh, forwarded to the query service. You have the alert manager as well. And then you can see all of those traces via the front end. Very simple, uh, very simple uh, architecture and it works perfectly fine. So now uh, my next step would be, let's pop into signals and see what's happening. Um, and what I like doing is if I go into the services, I can pop in and say, okay, so I have my PokeShop application. I can get a, an overview of what's happening. But what I actually care about is the operation for the Pokemon import. So this is what I care about because this is the API endpoint I was I was running a post request against. So post Pokemon import. So this is going to filter out all of the traces for my uh, Pokemon import. Um, I also want to make sure that I'm looking at the latest one. So let's just rotate this around a bit. Um, and let's look at this one. So this is uh, just uh, actually a step back. Looking at this on uh, at first glance, they all look fine. They're all 200. They all look perfectly fine. So yeah, this is like <laughs> this is like giving me flashbacks to being like you know working in operations and being like, hey, no no request stands out, right? Everything took exactly. the same amount of time. Everything returned two hundred, right? Exactly. Well, because one of these has a body of two hundred. This is not working and it's broken and it's destroyed. But the status code two hundred. <laughs> and welcome, yeah. welcome to why testing or black box testing with my with microservices doesn't work anymore. Like the, the, yeah. the, this would be this would pass every test and it's it's broken right, um and that's uh, that's the the interesting part. If I do drill down though, I can see that okay, so this service is fine. I'm running this uh, this import Pokemon and then I'm running a get request and this is obviously perfectly fine. If I drill down, I can go in and see create Postgres pro Pokemon. So this is the Postgres uh, operation and I'm getting a database result with Charizard. So this is perfectly fine. Um, it's it's behaving the way I want it to behave. But if I do backtrack and look at the other trace that also seemingly looks perfectly fine, um, I can see that, oh, now it's pretty red. So something something's messed up here, right? So this doesn't really look right. Um, if I do drill down to after my rabbit MQ, so you can see the Q uh, spans here, um, I drill down here and this looks pretty wonky. Like I have no idea what what's happening here. I'm not seeing any... I'm not seeing any status codes. I'm not seeing anything. I'm just see, seeing my Redis going crazy. I don't see my Postgres span at all. So something, nothing happened to Postgres. Um, so what I have to do is that obviously you need to check the events and then, oh, okay, there we go. There's the problem. So there's an exception here and I needed to do all of this drilling to actually find the exception, which is not very fun. Um, and that's, uh, in my point of view, there are two main problems with this. Uh, the first problem would be my instrumentation, so my code instrumentation, my open telemetry, so the open telemetry instrumentation I wrote is not good enough because it's obviously, it's not showing me the problem quick enough. So I need to fix them, my, my instrumentation itself. Um, I need to make sure it's better so I can actually get to the root cause of the problem quicker. And then the second problem, which I think is even the even bigger problem is that how do I make sure that once I find this, it never happens again. So I wanna make sure this import Pokemon and this exception never pass my my integration tests or my end-to-end -end tests or any testing harness before pushing to production, right? So those are the two main problems um, that I really want fixing. Um, and to backtrack to that, doing that with trace test is pretty similar to actually exactly the same as this uh, diagram. So in addition to using signals for monitoring and for observability, uh, we're going to plug in trace test as well. Uh, and by doing that, we're going to plug in an additional open telemetry collector, which is going to act as the main ingestion endpoint uh, for all of the traces. And then from there, we're going to either funnel traces to trace tests when running uh, tests or to signals for, for storage. So pretty basic setup, um, nothing really magical going on here. Uh, the only thing that can be confusing is that um, the signals open telemetry collector um, People can mistake this for the root open telemetry collector. So we just kind of, I explained this in a blog post or like a documentation uh, recipe. So we can share that later on just for people to uh, to understand. But well, we got to link that this... for, because we were talking about this last week is like a lot of architectures are collector to collector, right? Yes. Like that's, that's absolutely like, in fact, pretty much anything that's like running in prod is probably going to need like a, a second collector someplace a little earlier down the path. So yeah, you're right. Like, like people who are just starting out with open telemetry don't get that. So that's, that's very good to be able to, to demonstrate to people. Like, um, you know, you're going to reduce your latency a ton. If this collector at the top, right, is running closer to your Node.js worker and your, and your API. Exactly. Um, and it's also, it's also good practice to use 
same way that you would use ingress for kubernetes or same way you would use whatever type of uh uh, like nginx for routing or whatever same way you have one ingestion endpoint that you would route further down the down the line um, this is the same way of thinking of best practices in that sense um, and i would like to show you what this setup would mean so i do have that's just a super simple sample docker compose right here um, and you can see that trace test is just a just a container it's a cloud native first app you run it as a as a dockerized image or a dockerized container image um, and that's it uh, what you would need in this uh, this instance you would need an open telemetry collector as well and then here's the kicker so the the configuration itself if we pull that up you're going to see that it's using one exporter for trace test so the trace test endpoint of course on the default 4317 OTLP ingest uh, as well as the other exporter for signals for the signals OTL collector also on 4317. So this is this is the only tricky config there is. Um, you're setting up the exporters to different locations and then using one open telemetry collector as the root or as the base ingest for all of your traces. Um, and that's that's all the trick there is. It's the, it's not really any magic going on there at all. So Adnan, are you used to me interrupting now? Have I have I have I thrown you off your game enough? And, oh no, go uh, for it. You do. I, and I did so this with Rafa a while back. I'm, I'm terrible. They, they like it. <laughs> so. But uh, I just wanted. We have a couple of guests now in in the the Zoom. So if I want to just pause for a sec, if anybody has any questions up to this point in this in this tutorial, uh, questions about multiple collectors, feel free to unmute yourself and 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 go ahead. Uh, otherwise, we'll keep keep rolling in just a sec here. Um, yeah, really like, uh, you know, this is, this is a great config. It totally makes sense that like, this is supposed to be the power of the collector, right? It's like, it can fill a lot of roles in terms of splitting data, filtering it, right? And yeah, this is something that I think most people who are really going to go all in with open telemetry and a truly like observability, you know, focused uh, process, you want to know how to do this. So this is not like a special trace test process. This is like, yeah, this is something you're going to want to learn to do anyway. So good to do it now. Exactly. And that's that's, that's the whole point of our, our mindset at trace test is that we want to make sure that we're using the, the open telemetry community best practices because, um, I mean, that's the point of it, isn't it? <laughs> to, to make sure that everybody's using open telemetry and that we're all using that unified, that one unified standard. And I would think that, uh, the easiest way of people to wrapping their minds or wrapping their heads around the collector per se is that um, if you've ever used Logstash or whatever, like logging, piping or whatever you want to call it tool, it's the same thing. It's just traces instead of logs. It's like there's no magic to it, right? So just break it down to simpler units mm -hmm, to say absolutely. and figure it out. Because whenever you like, I, I've used Logstash back, back in the day and tons of different logging tools. I even maintained one logging tool whilst I was still an engineer five years ago. Um, and th they're not, they, you know, it's everybody used to use funneling logs into something else and then transforming them into something batching or whatever, and then sending them to some other log stash thing and then doing it's, it's the same thing, like using collectors. It's the same thing logically, but you're using it with traces. It's not really, I mean, you can use it with logs and metrics as well, obviously, because the collector supports all of that. But traces specifically, you, you don't need to think of it as something really complex. It's it's just a collector, right? Um, and on that topic, do we have any questions we can we can answer? Yeah, one question from the chat is: uh, Are we competing with products like Dynatrace, etc.? Uh, Sundar, you want to like talk about it, or might give us more context? Are you talking about Signals competing with Dynatrace, or are you talking about Trace Test competing with Dynatrace? Uh no, it's a more generic question. Yeah, there is no doubt. So traces. So I, I was in fact uh, uh, leading the New Relic Development Center. Uh, okay. so we had set up a 200 people center in Hyderabad a uh, couple of years back. So obviously what you tell about traces makes sense, absolute sense. I'm just trying to see in what space exactly is Signals operating. Though I know it's a more generic question, which I can ask uh, Pranay etc. later as well. Sure. Well, I can just quickly answer. Uh, yeah, but so broadly, we are. What is the USP? Yeah. What is the USP which uh, Signals brings in? Because everybody is talking about traces, everybody is talking about collectors, everybody is talking about similar things. So, how will you differentiate yourself? 
because that may be a very key thing is it good companies like comcast etc are anyway using your product already so what will make it even better so i can answer quickly uh, though it's slightly off path but uh, so i think the couple of things which uh, where we differentiate is we are open telemetry native so uh, day one we are based on open telemetry that's the only sdk we follow and i think that helps us uh, get deeper into the open telemetry ecosystem uh, help open telemetry people who want to use open telemetry and like projects like this like we work very easily with for example tracers right and this would have not been possible if you are like not native to but right and we believe that open telemetry is the future as adnan was talking about right so that's one of the angles the second is we are based on columnar data store uh, we are based uh, on clickhouse so we see that uh, that is much better for uh, uh, data which has like uh, high quality data and uh, we are seeing that to be much more uh efficient and cost effective so that's like we are based basically on new uh data stores and uh, i think going forward open source should be the way because like this is a area which is uh, like this is a type of tool which is used by developers and i think uh it's great for people to start with open source and like being developer ourselves uh we always start with open source tools right? so those are the three key things where we uh focus on we of course we can chat more deeply on like how we yeah, yeah deeply, so sorry like yeah. open telemetry open source and like columnar data store i think these are the key three things where we focus on yeah i, I think uh, whatever he was explaining adnan was saying was fantastic so i think yeah yeah that's it just just a question we can chat about sure. other things later okay sure sure yeah adnan i had a quick question for you uh 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 how much is the memory and ram foot, uh, cpu and ram footprint for the trace test container like if suppose there's a user who wants to run test test how much ram and memory it will need uh it's very small uh it's all written in golang so okay yeah, it's so within 50 mb 10 mb like i i i'm not going to quote the engineers and you're not you know i don't know exactly okay. but the thing is is that i'm whenever i'm running it with whatever tool it's always the other tool that's bottlenecking my machine <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah it's it's very very small um but yeah cool. uh this is a cool discussion and also using clickhouse that you guys are using clickhouse which is freaking cool um just want to throw that out i like i like clickhouse a lot um and yeah i threw in some links regarding it being a columnar data store and why it's important and why people might want to to read up on that um yeah. and why it's good for metrics so anyway um let me pull back on on this graph a bit and then explain what else um i wanted to show and then the point of it was that uh, so the curl request the, the curl api test so was tests i was running uh let me go ahead and just uh, rerun all of those through trace test so i explained how you run it it's a container like any other let me go ahead and create one test really quickly so you can see the process of it um before i do though uh, i want to say that we also support http grpc trace uh, triggering by a trace id and tr triggering via kafka which is a cool new feature if you want to uh, try it out but for this demo I'll just do a quick http request I'm going to be cheating because I'm going to run this uh, sample which is quite literally again the pokemon import so running the same api endpoint and I'm running the same six uh, id because I want to add uh, charizard to my um to my database so now uh, i'm getting the ba the basic response here so you have the response data you have the status you have the time so these are all basic postman esc features you're getting um but the actual magic doesn't really happen here it happens on the first and foremost the trace tab so you remember back when i mentioned we have two problems first is the poor quality of my trace and then two the actual problem of uh, that exception passing all of my tests uh solving problem number 1 is what we do in the analyzer so the trace analyzer basically gives you a unified coherent place where you can fix your trace uh, and follow all of your semantic conventions all of the common problems the rules all of the security best practices basically everything that you can find in the open telemetry documentation in one place so it's all converged in this one tab where you can see okay so my semantic conventions are good except for this one So this tab or actually this span is is causing a problem it's not named the way it should be if i want to check that i can open the docs in trace test and this is all uh, in line with with what you have in the open telemetry spec um which is incredibly helpful if you want to make sure that your traces aren't the problem and then obviously if you want to if, if you want to talk about the open telemetry 
standards or semantic conventions. We can also do that a bit. If not, if you already know, I guess, because this is a Signals community call and you're open telemetry native, I'm thinking most people already know what they are. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's uh, to keep the discussion short, it's basically the rules that you should be adhering to and the specs that the open telemetry community uh, are defining as best practices for your traces. So one example might be, uh, let's pull up uh, no empty attributes, let's say, let's say. So this one right here, it has an empty, empty attribute. So trace test .span status description is empty. And if, I, if we pull up the documentation, we can see that uh, it is not allowed to have empty attributes. So, so we're going to go ahead to jump back in, into our into our trace, or actually into our code instrumentation and fix this. Right? And this, this is going to be uh, the same pattern for whatever you're doing. Let's say you want to uh, make sure your security is on point and you have this problem where this is using insecure HTTP instead of HTTPS, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all going to help, help me with the first problem, which is my trace isn't good enough. Uh, it's not uh, written in, in uh, high enough quality to actually see the problem. So can then, you can you like suppress these from this interface as well, or or is it you have to go and actually fix can. them within the trace? Uh, you can, if you don't want to see them, or even you have two options. First, you can fail the test entirely just by having the analyzer fail, or mm -hmm. you can disable them, or even more, you can uh, pick what to enable and disable. So let's say I don't want to have anything. I just go ahead and disable everything. Um, I maybe just want the semantic convention so I can disable everything else. Or if I want the semantic conventions to be uh, weighted differently, let's say I don't only care about span naming being <clears throat> warning, or I can care about required attributes being disabled, I can do that as well. So it's fully modular based on what you want. And currently, when we have these three uh, plugins, which means semantic conventions, common problems, and security. But with with time, we're hoping that both the community are going to work on contributing more, and we're going to get in-house more time to contribute to, to build out more plugins. Um, but yeah, so this is very modular based on based on what you want. Um, That's yeah. really neat. It seems like you could also use, you could use a processor, right, on that on that um, open telemetry, on the collector you're running. If you're like, oh, well, let me go ahead and decorate this with the, the information that it's looking for here, raising an error about, uh, you could use a processor to do that. I mean, provided you actually have that context. Exactly, and this is what this is why we why we uh, actually started working on this analyzer screen and and implemented it is because we wanted to, the developer feedback loop to be better. Because once you go ahead and run this the first time, you want to make sure your traces are quality enough to be put into production. Um, so that's the that's the main focus behind this one. It's like a linter, but for traces. It's probably the best way of saying it. Um, and yeah, that was probably problem number one. And then problem number two is what we can pop into the test tab, which is where we do all of the test specs. Now we can do simple stuff like adding, making sure that all HTTP spans have a status code of 200. That's a super simple one. And then a more complicated one would be, let's pop open the import Pokemon tab here, uh, span, sorry. And if we add a test spec, we can make sure that this span, which is after the RabbitMQ, always shows up, which means that if we select, do selected spans count and make sure it's equal to one, we can say validate that this span always exists. So if my RabbitMQ fails, this span is not going to exist, which means that something's wrong, right? So this is the, this is the new way of testing microservices where you can actually test something after a, a message queue. Um, and this is where if you use the new Kafka uh, trigger, you would be able, if you're using Kafka, which is in this case, um, you can literally just run the test after the, the message queue, which is pretty cool. It's, I mean, come on, right? Um, and then obviously you can also do some more cool things. Let's say you want to test Redis. You can pop open this side, nav uh, side uh, navigation here and you can say, oh, I want to make sure that I'm getting the DB payload attribute. I want to make a test spec on that. I want to make sure that the payload is equal to Pokemon 6. And I want to make sure validate uh, I mean, if I knew how to type validate Redis is Charizard, and then I can save that up. I can do the same thing to Postgres as well. If I want to do that, I can pop down to my Postgres. I can find the DB result. I can go ahead and say, create a test spec. Um, and if I want to be even more fancy, I can do, let's just make sure it contains uh, Charizard like that. And you can say, yeah, I want my validate 
that Postgres as Charizard, which is, I mean, come on. How, how long did it take for me to create these tests? Was it like five minutes, give or take? Yeah, I again, like, I don't mean to, you know, for this to sound like pitchy for trace tests, but I definitely am like, oh, I get it now. You know, like, I, I, I get like the idea of being able to see, like, hey, do all the components exist on the trace that I expect to be on my test item? Like, that's very powerful, right? Like, that's, that's very powerful to be able to say, um, I just spent so much time, especially at New Relic and, and, you know, like all the time I spent with observability stuff, um, uh, like just looking for anomalies within traces, right? To find what the problem is. We have a question for Dimitri. Uh, does this plugin affect the performance of tests? Um, and then some detail just from the Cypress experience, more plugins lead to longer and less stable test execution, especially when you have a lot of tests. Uh, you mean the analyzer? Probably means the analyzer. Yeah, I know. I, I, Dimitri joined a little a little late, so may not have seen the first part where we talk about what the architecture is here. Where like this is collecting traces and examining them and and raising flags of them. So I wouldn't think that we would expect this to be like holding up our like acceptance oh, no. tests, right? Oh, no, like no, no, we no. expect this just to be running constantly. At least that's my understanding. Maybe you can. Yeah the the that. only the only thing you're waiting for, quote unquote, waiting for is that uh, trace test is polling for the trace itself. So based on, so we're getting, so what happens is that technically what happens is that this trigger is going to uh, inject a parent, a trace parent ID or a parent trace ID, whatever you want to call it, uh, when triggering this API. And you can see it in the trace, you see the traces trigger span out top. So it's going to embed this. And then based on that, it's going to figure out which trace, or actually which trace spans to collect in this overview. And then based on that, you can run your trace assertions on that. So the only wait time you you have is trace test actually getting all of those traces. Everything else that happens, so the analyzer, and pull up the analyzer, all of this, it happens like that once we get the traces. Uh, yeah. These test specs, again, get applied like that once we get the traces. So the only only real wait time is actually getting the traces. And we would expect, expect it to be, you know, analyzing just the traces it's getting from production, right? From just yes. running as part of normal operation. From, so from yes, from this API uh, response, basically from this distributed trace response, you're getting back from this mm -hmm. API test. Yeah, and there's a, a, a link in the the chat, and I'll link it again, Dimitri. There's like a, a, a an architecture diagram uh, that uh, Adnan did. But also, I want to steal your architect your your diagramming tool, by the way, because we were just talking about this on our team. It's like we really liked hands on diagrams, but we couldn't always replicate them nicely. I'm like, oh, I gotta steal whatever whatever he's doing to do those diagrams. It's perfect. I'm going to share it because I absolutely love it. I oh, this, love is, it. this is Excalibur. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get on it. Someone, I'm embarrassed to say, someone sent me that link on Monday and was like, you should check this out. And I haven't done it yet. So now, now I guess I have to. Now, now you twist my arm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, okay. uh, I mean, once I found it, dude, I'm not going back. I'm gonna, just going to use that. So, um, but yeah, no, this is, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have any more questions? No, good. Uh, so got just a time check. Uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, uh, so we, we went a little long, but we're not, we're not, we're not uh, hitting, going to hit our hour mark at all. We still have time for Palo. So I think we're, we're, yeah. we're doing, we're doing okay. Uh, I don't think I have a ton more. Uh, and, no, I, I'll, I'll be wrapping unless up. Unless you're going to show us the minutes. drones that unfold and, and create an entire AI army from this stuff too. I mean, if you. <laughs> If you really want me to, you know, I can always figure something out. Um, but it's uh, probably five more minutes. The only real uh, thing that I want to show to wrap this all up is that, so you remember in the in the sample test, I was running with an ID of nine, 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 a bunch of nines, basically. So if I rerun that test here, you can see what happens. Um, once again, it's going to trigger the test, get some response data, it's going to be awaiting the trace. So it's polling for the trace. And if I go into my, let's say test tab, once it actually gets the traces, hopefully I haven't killed my, my local instance of this, uh, it's going to show you uh, the failing tests because of this exception that's going to show up. Uh, ideally sometime soon. If, if this is already dead, I'd probably have one from before. Actually, I can just run one from before. Let's do it that. 
So Ken asks, can we run it from CI CD? Of course. That's the, the last last nugget of info I want to pass along. We'll get there. We'll get there, Ken. We promise we'll get there. Uh, so the point of what I wanted to show with the fail test, so let's pop in here and, and go ahead and try it. Uh, it takes a while because it's... Uh, actually, let's go back here. Let's go back here. This is the problem with live demos. You're always, always waiting for something. We'll, we'll, we'll have your medal in the mail for bravery for being willing to like live demo all this stuff and, and try to get it all to work live. Ah, it's true. It's true. Um, and go and see. Uh, whilst this is loading, we can just uh, pop in and show you the, the automation as well. So the fourth tab is obviously automate. So this is all uh, cater for running in your CI CD and automating the processes of running these tests. Uh, idea, uh, so the left-hand side is where you get the YAML definition of this test. So all of these things uh, correlate to this YAML definition correlates to this exact test that we built in the UI. Uh, I can copy this file. So it's a YAML file. I can put it in my, um, over here, I can put it in my, in my Visual Studio code. I can edit it. And as, if you look at it, you can see that there's a trigger and there's a specs section. The specs cover all of the assertions, and then my trigger covers the HTTP request, the post method, and the URL I'm triggering. So it's quite literally, you can use the web UI for use, for building visual tests. You can also use the whatever visual ed, like code editor to run programmatically any test you want to make. So it's, it's very convenient in that sense. Also, the specs, uh, they all correlate to what we were adding in the UI. So you have the status code, you have the select spans count, you're getting the Redis payload, you're checking the, the Postgres uh, database result. So these are all things that uh, that you can do and run uh, to run uh, it automatically or in their CI CD. And of course, the way you run it is via the CLI. So you install the, the trace test CLI, and then you point to the file itself, or you can also just use a test ID. So you can trigger it ver uh, via the test ID that's get getting defined in the trace test server. So to demo one of these easier ones, so let's say I'll take this file that I that I just copied from the from the web UI, and I can go ahead and run it. So let's do uh, trace test run test, and I'm pointing to the file that's in my test folder, and it's the test YAML, which is basically this test YAML right here. Now, if I go ahead and trigger that, this is going to uh, if I pull up the UI, this is going to create a, an additional test in my UI, and if I look at it here, yep. Actually, no. Here, 11 seconds ago. So this is um, obviously my instance has, has frozen because I murdered the Docker desktop. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pulling up the uh, pulling up the test. It is uh, running the test, and it's probably going to probably going to show the trace very sometime soon. Uh, so that's always the choice, folks. Do you run the stuff and choke your laptop with Docker Desktop, or do you suddenly realize three weeks later that you've been running a DigitalOcean cluster that you should have shut down all that time ago? I have something to do right after this call, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I so I should have I should have done the the Kubernetes setup somewhere in the cloud because yeah, this is just the demo is way too cool when it actually works. Um, but yeah, uh, I can also restart this and hand over to uh, to Paulo. Yeah, I think I, this has been great, though. This is a really, uh, I, I can really see that there, there's some space for growth here in um, how people test and use these deep observability tools, because, the, you know, the, the time was, even though a lot of people had talked about tracing, it really wasn't available to most mid-sized teams uh, in a way that was effective, right? It's like only these very heavy observability tools that were quite expensive and quite complex to implement, but uh now that that has been unlocked for a lot of people, I think what we do with the traces has become an open question. So it's very neat to see trace test uh, trying to give people an automated insight into like, hey, when, when are there anomalies within those uh, within those uh, traces? Exactly, and that was the the first uh, the first thing is to obviously let's make sure exceptions like that, like a, like I was showing, never get into production, and then also improve the development lifecycle because developers are writing traces. We need to help them. Right, that's the that the hardest part is to write traces uh, and write instrumentation well. It's incredibly hard. So, and then of course, 
um, I can also show one last thing. We have these thing called uh, variable sets and variables, which means that if you want to run this test in a CI and apply the ID dynamically, you can do that as well. Let's say, Ooh. yeah. So you have this dollar sign with a var with a colon, and if you do that via the CLI, you can run that test. It's going to ask for the for the ID like that. Let's say I want ID number six. I hit that, and this is going to trigger the test uh, once again in the UI. And also, it's going to generate a new test run. Let me see if it actually, there we go. And then if you want to run that same variable, if you can see here at the bottom, we have the variable. And if you want to run that same thing ad hoc, let's say you want to run this test ad hoc, you go ahead and let's say trigger it once again. It's going to pop up this and say, yep, yeah, which variable they want to use. And then if I want to run this and see if, is it going to fail with some random number, I can rerun that ad hoc and see if it works or if it doesn't work. This is very cool for testing in production as well, where you can set up certain variables and then test as you go. I really like that. That's really neat. You can almost like chaos monkey yourself, right? You can be like, what do I do if it, you know, has the, has a, a, a an int that's 9 billion. What do I do if it's, you know, an exact overrun of, uh, of, uh, it limitations what if it's an object that just says cheese you know you exactly. can just see well, how's it going to respond in all those situations that's really good and that's where we get this problem so if you remember the import pokemon was failing with some random exception if i pull up the i can see that the events actually have an exception so if i want to make sure that the test never fails and this never gets through i can add a test spec and say yo i want this except or these events uh, actually i want these span events to not contain an exception. I can say like that. And if I save that test spec, this is actually going to throw this. Yep. No, we found an exception. This is not good. So we want to make sure that that gets into the test spec and never happens again. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's, it's really cool, both using this ad hoc and then using the, uh, the span events to figure out if there's an exception or not. Um, it's really, really cool. Oh, that's really neat. Okay. Uh, that, uh, if you're not, you know, going to go try out uh, a trace test and and signals together, I don't know. I don't know what we can do to convince you folks. We're gonna gonna clip this out and uh, share it around. Um, so Adam, uh, we'll have to talk again soon about uh, some of the aspects here. It's very very neat and uh, really good for people who are you know getting getting further on that maturity curve with their observability tooling. So absolutely fantastic. I want to change gears a little bit and talk about people who are getting started with open telemetry, trying to view their first traces, get their stuff instrumented. Uh, something I mentioned a minute ago was that, you know, every developer is doing some kind of tracing, right? Or I'm sorry, some kind of logging and setting their log somewhere. But, uh, you know, what we expect in, in for modern architectures is we expect that developers, much like they became familiar with, with testing and automated testing years ago, it's like, we want almost everybody to understand a little bit of open telemetry. So, uh, Paolo, why don't you uh, unmute yourself, introduce yourself to the people. Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hello, greetings from Brazil for everyone. Uh, let me give uh, some context. Uh, I'm working as DevOps engineer from Global Play. Uh, Global Play is... Uh, Basically, it's the Netflix from Brazil. We we are bigger than Netflix here on Brazil. Uh, we are a paid and freemium uh, platform. We have more than content. Uh, some of the plus the paid and no paid users. We have uh, 30 million users. So we are a big platform which are millions of requests every day. So. Uh, basically, uh, our backend of monitoring uh, are entirely open source, but the APM are not. We are using the New Relic. Uh, we don't have nothing to say about New Relic. APM is a perfect platform, but is maybe some expensive, <laughs> but it's uh, really good. Uh, and I have a, they give me a task to, to found and maybe a, a search on the, Alternative open source to use the APM, uh, and that's a, 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 as well done. Uh, I found the signals. Uh, I uh, is a really good surprise because these are really good. Uh, we make some tests with another's like uh, 
Jaggers and, and Zipkin. Uh, this I think is not not good as a signals because you need to have maybe a two exporter, one for metrics and another for tracings. And the signals you just have a one exporter. So and, and, and yeah, that's and, a big. Yeah. So, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, like that's. You know, like I absolutely think like if you are just in tracing and you only care about tracing, right? Like Jaeger can be a great tool for you, right? But most of us, that's just not, you know, like we were looking at traces just a minute ago and we sort of see how it's like, okay, sometimes traces give you a full picture, but so, but sometimes you're just like, God, I just need to use, I need to look at what the logs are. And so you find yourself, like you open up the trace, we've all done it. You like highlight the, the transaction ID. You go over to your tra to your logging tool, and you're like, okay, I got to search for this transaction ID and dig through the logs. Not ideal, right? So yeah, a unified system often makes more sense. Yes, and the and I think he, he, in the instrument instrument thingy and ready like a uh, new relic. Uh, you have a prayer ready dashboards. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we chose uh, uh, signals. So we are implementing signals. We don't have a turn off the new relic yet, but I think we can do this. <laughs> but is this? So uh, my backend from signals from this from our work uh, implementing signals from Global Play. That's platform uh, I said, uh, and and. Um, when the time I'm implementing, I'm making a course, uh, a course from Udemy. Uh, so my course is from DevOps. Uh, I decided to make a, a complete DevOps course on Udemy that have a, a entire cycle of DevOps and which the differential that we are uh, one hundred percent uh, open source, right? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, this is so powerful, right? It's like, you know, wh when you went to make like a complete DevOps course on Udemy, maybe two or three or four years ago, it was a little tough, right? Because you're like, okay, how do you do some of these basic steps? And it's like, oh, you're going to use like uh, uh, Logly or whatever other like SaaS tool. And then sometimes you'd have, especially you have people like all over the world, they'd be like, hey, I cannot afford to spend $25 a month even on this tool. Right. And so you're like, okay, you can't, you know, like, okay, so that part you're going to have to learn on the job. You can't preview it. So it's very nice, especially when you're trying to do something like a course on Udemy to be like, hey, this is all open source tools. So fantastic. I'm sorry for interrupting. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, I present my experience, my work, and from which signals I will share my screen now to, to, yeah. okay, uh, one moment. Uh, okay, uh, it's okay. My yeah. screen, yeah, looks okay. good. Okay, so is my course is a Brazilian course yet? I have a idea to to transform an English version uh, of this course. So because it's a DevOps course, we have a uh, maybe a implementing uh, running code from command line. So put it after on the Docker's and after get the Docker image and put in Kubernetes and make it deployment with Helm and have a CI CD uh, too. And, and being here on monitor. Uh, monitor is really, really important from DevOps. So uh, we started the course using the Grafana, Prometheus and Lock. Okay, that uh, was um, I'm using from past, but now my preferred tools is uh, signals, especially. Uh, look here, we have a Prometheus exporter for metrics and Loki exporter from logs. And maybe we have need this from tracings. You need another two, like yeah. as I say, Zipkin. Uh, we have Zipkin, Jaggers. So you, you need to three exporter, right? Uh, and and I, 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 I become happy to, to know signals because I think it's a difference from my course because uh, I think this is more modern open telemetry that can you export uh, logs, metrics, and tracings on the same exporter. So from the course, we start uh, with the class uh, teaching what is APM. Uh, I think 
some people don't know really really is uh, APM. Uh, so we have a class that uh, I'm trying to <laughs> to answer this this what is APM. Uh, so after we have a signals install class that we, we install signals using Kubernetes. Uh, and after we have the class that we are instrumenting our code with uh, with open telemetry, uh, the Gataria is the social media from uh, of cats that we use from learning on course. So oh, yeah. we okay <laughs> nice. Uh, so we instrument the Gataria with open telemetry and send. Uh, tracings in, in metrics through signals and uh, was good. So we implement a uh, APM and after as a plus, of course, you can look at this. Uh, we implement the logs and metrics from Kubernetes using the example from signals. Nice. Documentation. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's really big. It's like being able to get some kind of like infra level view into kubernetes with signals that feels very powerful there's a recent blog post on this which i'll link down below uh uh, uh the, the video description if you check down below for the backlinks folks uh please go ahead okay nice uh so uh okay so you have the implementing the tracings metrics and logs so in you know, one platform this is really good and after we have a uh, a, a classroom that we discuss because why I I, I think he, signals is better than even than Grafana and Prometheus is very consolidated platform but it's like a it's like a new relic right you have a one platform and you have the metrics you have, can monitor servers you can collect logs you can tracings. Uh, in this, and I discuss this. I discuss because I I think the signals is a player change from our monitoring. <laughs> I think in open source we don't have a a tool so powerful like a new relic, right? <laughs> new relic is yeah, is, is good. Yeah, I, I, so, I'm on jokes. When's that? Where's the section where you teach people how to do trace tests? Um, so uh. We have one question came in from from Dimitri, which I I, I want to cover. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll hook the two of you up on the the, the Signals community chat to to you know get that get that uh, uh, information both submitted and translated into Portuguese. But um, so Dimitri asked, do you have AWS Lambda instrumentation with Open Telemetry in Signals like uh, a dot? Actually, I'm 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 lost on. I I'm sure I should know what that. Um, initialism stands for but um is there aws lambda instrumentation uh interesting question you can report out to an open telemetry collector from aws lambda um so oh yes yes thank you Adnan. thank you i i i had it and i lost it so uh, you know, Signals can accept anything that is uh, uh, you know reportable to any other open telemetry collector so um and a common architecture is going to be a collector to collector connection. So maybe you're running a collector on your uh, network or within within your system, and then and then having a report out to the Signals collector. Uh, sorry, Pranay, did you want to? Yeah, Pranay's linking to that uh, that e example. So so yeah, that's the general thing, Dimitri. Is that um, uh, it's it's yeah, whatever you can report with Open Telemetry, you can you can send into to Signals, no problem. Um, you are probably going to need, depending on how you tack it or whether you do some transformation, you may need to set up a custom uh, a dashboard to view that data. Um, it, 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 I would have to look at the uh, ADOT implementation to see how it's tagged as a service. If it has a service name, though, it's going to show up as a service. It's going to show up as uh, transactions on a service. Yeah, so I that's think, uh, go ahead. also look at the open telemetry receiver. There's an open telemetry Lambda receiver, I think. Uh, if you're just trying to send data from your applications to signals, that should just work. Uh, so yeah, we have had users who use uh, open telemetry receivers to send data to signals. Should work. Yeah. yeah. So this is um, this gets us into a topic which we're not going to cover all of today, but of like um, one of the real powers of being completely open telemetry native is that 
the data that comes in from a telemetry from any source is a like first class citizen in our interface. And it's it's worth doing some comparison there. Like other people will say, oh, well, we accept open telemetry data. Then you go log in and see the dashboard. Where is it? <laughs> Where's where is the data? Where did it go? Right. And it's like, oh, if you click seven times, you'll find some little obscure menu where you can see it. Anyway, I'm sorry, Paolo, we got all off on a on a, on a tangent there, but we'll we'll post some we'll post some ADOT uh, details uh, in there. But uh, I really want people to check out this course. I'm going to share it around. I have a few uh, Portuguese channels that I use, and um, I, I really love seeing uh, like DevOps instrumentation uh, you know, information getting more democratized and available to more people. Um, it's kind of a weird time for people who write like application code and are like coders, right? And like that's become very, you know, obviously very popularized, very easy to get information on. But DevOps information, not so much. DevOps engineering, not so much. So I really love seeing you share this. I think it, it's so, so neat. Um, do you have other places you'd like people to come find you or interact with with your work, Paolo? Um, okay, I, I can send you the um, uh, my LinkedIn and the website of your uh, DevOps, okay? Um, Love that. I will send you on the chat. Um, Great. And I'll add a link down below. Thank you so much. OK. Uh, OK. So it is, I expect uh, with my course, I can share the signals from Brazilian people. Uh, Global, Global Play, my, my company is very, very famous on Brazil and very respected. Yeah. And, and, and this, I think, I think the, the Brazilian uh, DevOps people and open source community will like it and I expect my, my course can help in dance with uh, modern things like uh, signals, okay? And I, I thank you from uh, Pranay and everyone from the signals team from, from this from this too, okay? Really nice. <laughs> and Paolo, I'm gonna send you a, a second envelope of stickers because the first envelope yeah. has not arrived. So I'll, I'll have to... Uh... Uh, send you a send you a second second envelope of them soon, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for for all you do for the Signals community. It's it's really really appreciated. Yeah, thanks okay. for spreading the word in the Brazilian community. I think yeah, we get lots of developers from Brazil, and it's really heartening to see like how a project can like cover all parts of the world and still get lots of users and lots of love. So thank, yeah. thanks for that. It's been really exciting seeing the adoption of like modern DevOps practices all over Central America. I had a lot of interest uh, to go and, and speak at DevOps Days uh, Bogota in Colombia. Well, that's in Spanish, so that's easy for me, but uh, uh, way, way better than my Portuguese. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's just been so, so fantastic to see. It's such a growing community, really, really neat. Um, and uh, I'll share Paolo's LinkedIn and other information uh, uh, down below the video. Thank you so much for joining everybody. We're getting right to the hour, so I don't want to keep anybody for too long. But uh, any any final thoughts? I don't know you want to say goodbye to people or give them any other uh, uh, notes. No, I'm just happy uh, I was here. So really, really thankful for everybody for the invite. Um, I sent some links in the chat as well if you if you want to do some follow ups. And yeah, I mean. Let's do this again sometime. I guess you can be our guests next, you know? Absolutely. And 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 Paolo, thank you so much for joining it. And I want to just say that you have the absolute coolest like personal website logo I've ever seen. That's really great. I love that that style. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we I, I think the we use the same uh Doxaurus from <laughs> Black King. I like Doxaurus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to take a couple of weeks off uh, 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 next week. We're getting to meet up all in, in, in person, um, which is fantastic. Uh, and then one more week after that, and then we'll be back. We'll be back in, uh, I believe, three weeks with our next uh, either hotel webinar, vendor neutral webinar, or one of our community calls. Uh, thank you so much for joining everybody. Uh, check us out soon. Do go ahead and uh, uh, follow us all over the place uh, on, on LinkedIn. You'll be seeing this on YouTube as well. Um, and we'll be joining our uh, community Slack to get connected with our community. Pranay, any final right. thoughts before I hit the end, end the, the stream finally? No, well, I think we're good. I think it's great to hear from both Atman and Pilo yeah. and like, let's do this more. Yeah, this was fantastic. Cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Cool. Bye, guys.